Hey, this is Mark again with another tutorial on one of my paintings. Um, this is Calyxis Imperium. Don't ask where I get the names from. Mainly from sci-fi novels and stuff. Um, so yeah, what I've done, I've started a new uh, project. Uh, I think this is 6,000 by 3,000 pixels. Um, this one I started in grayscale, so I've gone down to the color and changed it to the grayscale slider. And then for the background, I'll start off with a kind of mid-tone gray. Um, so just then I've got myself a cloud texture brush and just basically laying down some background. Um, again, I had no idea what I was gonna paint. So when I don't have any idea, I just use some texture brushes and just lay down some shapes. Um, that's another good thing about starting in grayscale because you just don't have to worry about color, obviously. So that's one less thing to worry about. You just gotta worry about the design. Um, so here I'm using a rock brush. It's kind of like a cheap brush, but who cares? Um, there's no cheating in art. It's not in digital art anyway, even though some people will say it is cheating. Um, so yeah, just laying down different textures um, and values as well. When I say values, I mean lights and darks. So I'm sticking to the landscape rules here. So my foreground is obviously gonna be darker than my background. So I'm just laying down dark shapes for, yeah. And I guess they look like rocks. So they're gonna be rocks. So here I'm just starting to forge out some major forms um, using a kind of mid-tone gray again. So I wanna show some distance, but um, I don't want them too far away. So it's not gonna to be too light of a gray. Um, just then I used the uh, polygon lasso tool and that's good for getting your straight lines. Um, yeah, so obviously straight lines are quite hard to get manually, so it's a good Photoshop tool for that. Uh, yeah, so coming into the foreground some more, so some darker colors. Um, yeah, so obviously I've just figured out that there might be another building there. Again as well, good thing to keep in mind is perspective. So as you can see, they're kind of angled, uh, all kind of going to one point. So you've got to imagine if you're actually in that scene and you've got a camera, and like what, how would it look to you? So I'm quite low down looking up, so I wanted to give that sense. So that's when you use perspective and it gives you a good sense of scale as well that way and then adds to the, to the realism of it all. So. The fundamentals are the most important thing. Well, obviously thought it was time to save it. Always a good thing to save, especially when you're running a really old laptop that likes to crash. So, yeah, smart. Let's take a sip of coffee. Uh, so, right, picking different brushes here. This is using an airbrush by the looks of it. That's really useful for kind of putting in some atmosphere. So again, another thing that makes your paintings look real is uh, atmospheric perspective. So you're, you're basically painting in the air particles. So it's, you can create a darker shadow in the corner like I just did and then, and then a light background as well. So yeah. Sorry, my laptop just frozen. Right, where was I? Right, so I'm throwing in another shape. Um, I thought I'd do something completely different to the rest of it, just to add some interest. So, and I'm also kind of using the rule of thirds here. Like, 
it's an old like photographer rule to make your picture look interesting and the composition laid out well um, yeah. so yeah the most important thing at this stage is your composition so that's your layout and your values which is your lights and darks and your uh, shadows and and lights uh, and the perspective so you're getting the very basics if any of these rules fail then it will fail as a picture it doesn't matter how detailed it is or how good the colors are it will fail as a painting if you fail on these basic rules so. Uh, yeah so here I'm just again just playing about with shapes and starting to rework the shapes oh here I decided to chuck in a circle for some reason don't know why just this is something I've been doing recently is just experimenting with new shapes I don't normally put circles in my paintings and again it's fundamentals like everything is made out of squares circles or triangles or I don't there's another shape I can't remember but yeah it's the it's the basics it's the fundamentals of reality essentially um, yeah so and the more fundamental shapes you have in your painting the the better it's going to read people will just they'll notice it straight away so I decided to put some circles in because they just I think they catch your eye so here I've created the circle on a new layer and then I've locked the the lock the layer and then lock the pixels so you can only paint within that shape uh, so yeah what I've done I, I just make a completely black circle lock it and then tone it and then yeah so the lights coming from the right so I've added a splash of light where it's reflecting onto the circle and then smoothed it out yeah so you just gotta you just gotta think what would happen in real life if there was a circle there and it's in the direct sunlight coming from the right how would the light reflect so here I've just duplicated that circle another little nice trick but as you can see the light is wrong now so I've had to correct that so the shadow is now on the right and then just on the top there's some light cool yeah so just little tricks like that like duplicating and stuff help speed up your creation process yeah so I'm just turning the opacity down so it pushes it into the background just there yeah, cool. See you for another part.